baby, and I really don't want today to be my first time. <laughs> we don't. I will, I will really stay clear of you, Lauren. I don't want you to get it, because it's not fun. Yeah, well, the thing is, though, I wonder, because some people aren't allergic, right? Right. And I do quite a bit of outdoor stuff at the lake with Jax, my dog, so I'm wondering if maybe I'm not allergic, but I still don't want to test it out. So. <laughs> you can come to my place. But, I've got plenty of it over there. We can just test a little spot for you. Oh, yeah, I think I'll pass. But, <laughs> um, I have a few headlines for you guys today. Okay. The first one's a follow-up from one we brought you last week about, you remember the little boy who donated all of his Disney savings to Hurricane Dorian evacuees to feed him hot dogs and chips. Well, look at this. Disney Dream Makers surprised him with a trip to Disney. So not only did he get to use his savings to help feed people who were trying to escape the storm, but Disney caught wind of it, and that was them surprising him. And it's really cute. Here in a second, you'll see Jermaine is the little boy. You'll see him getting to hug Mickey Mouse, and it's sweet because not only was his wish to help people, not only was that wish able to come true, but his wish to go to Disney for his seventh birthday is able to come true as well. So it's the best of both worlds. And, you know, this makes you actually happy, thankful. <laughs> there it is. For social media, because yes. a lot of bad things. Arguing can come from social media, but it's also, I'm sure, how Disney World found out what this little boy was doing. I love mm. that they, they latch onto these great stories mm -hmm. and they encourage him to do more good things because, look, he got rewarded for that. And I'm always just in awe of these little kids that come up with these ideas at such a young age. I know, and that they actually follow through with yeah. them. And yeah. props to mom and dad, too, or grandma, I think, is who he lives with. Because that's a lot of work for her, too, to coordinate mm -hmm. handing out the food and the chips and the water to those people. That is precious. Yeah. I, I, I want to go back and look at that because he was talking, and I want to see how he talks. He yeah. seemed like he really was pretty, pretty old for his age, an old soul. Maybe. Well spoken. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. you're right. Uh, this next headline comes from an Italian restaurant in KC. Cupini's Italian restaurant is sending the world's first meatball into space. Ugh, that was terrible. <laughs> well, I think probably it was Old? maybe a plastic version. Oh, I don't hey, know. gotcha. Okay, sorry. I think, but they actually sell real meatballs in their restaurant. But they launched it in a weather balloon. Elisa was freaking out this morning when we watched <laughs> it. Cupini's general manager is a self-titled space tech and somehow released their meatball named Cosmo on a weather balloon 89,000 feet up. So from there it will land anywhere from 75 to 200 miles away. They'll have to find the meatball and then they plan to display it back in the restaurant. But, uh... It's interesting. I thought that was a real meatball. It's like, that looks like it has a little mold on it. So, like, it doesn't look like a normal meatball to me. Yeah, I have a feeling that one's just a prop. Okay. So good. that it will stay together once it takes flight. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, good meatballs to eat are really moist. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling probably might not withstand the weather balloon. But now I want to know. <laughs> now I want to know if the real one You would. said they're going to display it in the restaurant once they find it? Yeah. It has to be plastic. Otherwise, that is going to go bad quick. <laughs> well, it always makes me wonder, like, you know, when you go to Panera or wherever, and, or Starbucks, and they have the food in the case? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always wonder, like, is that plastic? Oh, is yeah. it real food that they yeah. preserved? Can I tell you what? Yeah. I Do you know? This. You know? I know okay. this because I watched CBS this morning. Okay. They did a whole story about this place in Japan, I think, that makes all the fake food. There is a factory oh. that makes the fake food, and it looks so real, you think you could eat it, and it's amazing. Oh, wow. These people are artists that do this. Okay, so that's what the meatball is, if I there had to guess. Go. Love it. I thought it was genius. That, yeah, I thank mean, you. The more you food. know. Yeah. Thank you, CBS, this morning. Okay. And now, I know our resident Italian, Elisa Raffa, <laughs> has opinions on this meatball. Elisa Raffa. How could you... I, the, the way that this conversation went, you totally bypassed the part that this was a weather balloon and that it's a meatball. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. Guys, um, 